Hello and welcome. This is Microsoft Flight Simulator and this is the Phoenix Airbus A320. And in today's episode, we'll be looking at the brake modes of this aircraft. Sounds quite straightforward, but there's a few things I think you should know when you operate this aircraft. So without further ado, let's get started. Well, as you can probably imagine, brakes are very important, a very important part of any aircraft, and therefore there's a lot of redundancy built in. The brakes are run hydraulically and are connected to different systems. We will go into that in a moment. We have discussed the brake fan in a separate video. I'm not going to be going through that again. If you want to, you can watch the video about that. Today it's all about how the brakes actually work and what to look for if you operate this aircraft. Okay, so the Airbus A320 series has four different brake modes. There is what we call normal braking, then there is alternate braking with anti-skid, alternate braking without anti-skid, and of course the parking brake. So let us start with the normal braking. In normal operations, the braking system is run by the green hydraulic system. So as long as this system has pressure, you just have normal braking. And this also includes what we call anti-skid and nose wheel steering. So this button up here, as long as this is on, then you have a normal braking configuration. Anti-skid, we've actually discussed in a separate video, it ensures that the wheels don't lock and don't skid across the runway, that they always keep turning and that way you always have the most efficient braking action available. There are two ways how the normal braking system can be activated. One is of course by the pedals down here by the pilot and the other one is the auto brake system up here. So after landing, if the auto brake is engaged, it will use the normal braking system to slow down the aircraft. So what happens if the green hydraulic system fails? Let's say we have either a leak or the pressure is just below what we should have. Well, in that case, the yellow system takes over. There's a control unit that activates some valves and makes sure the brakes still work. In this case, so if you lose the entire green system, the brakes work exactly like they always do. You still have your anti-skid, your nose wheel steering, and actually to you as a pilot, there is no difference whatsoever. And this is what we call alternate braking with anti-skid. So essentially, if you lose the green system, the yellow system will take over. And to you as a pilot, everything works as normal. But what happens if you have a really bad day and you lose the yellow and the green hydraulic system? Well, you can still slow down the aircraft. This is what we call alternate braking without anti-skid. So the way it works is there is a large cylinder of braking fluid installed on the aircraft and this cylinder is independent of any of these systems. It will always hold a certain amount of pressure. You can actually see this here. So this indicator here, I, I think a lot of sim pilots don't pay much attention to it, but it's actually quite important. So this uh, indicator up here, it says accu pressure, and this is the accumulator pressure, and this is the cylinder I was just telling you about. So this needs to be in the green, and we check this before every single flight. And so as long as this pressure is in the green, that means the accumulator can supply you for at least seven full brake applications. And that should be enough to stop the aircraft on the runway. What's very important is you need to move this here into the off position. And you no longer have anti-skid and nose wheel steering. So what that means is once you land on the runway, you have to stop on the runway and the aircraft has to be removed by tow truck because you don't have any nose wheel steering. When I started flying the A320, there was no system in place to help us without anti-skid. So the procedure was that the pilot monitoring would monitor 
these indicators here. So this is the left brake, this is the right brake. And when the pilot flying applied the brakes, they had to ensure that they stayed below 1000 PSI, as otherwise there was a real danger that the wheels would lock. So the pilot monitoring would constantly monitor this and tell the pilot flying to either release the brakes a bit or if he or she could add a bit more braking. And this was the procedure. Now this has changed. All aircraft now have a software that does this automatically. We no longer need to monitor this. I haven't tried this on the Phoenix A320. I do not know if they simulate this uh, software or not. Uh, but um, shortly I would like to give it a go and see what happens. And that brings us to the last part, which is the parking brake. Now the parking brake is actually supplied by the yellow hydraulic system. And uh, it can also be supplied by the accumulator. So should you lose both yellow and green hydraulic pressure, the accumulator that we just mentioned is also capable of uh, applying you with the parking brake. One caveat to this, the accumulator will only be able to hold the parking brake for approximately 12 hours. So if the parking brake is set and is using the pressure from the accumulator, be very careful. After 12 hours, the aircraft may start moving if there are no chocks in place. But of course, as you know, we always put chocks on aircraft and uh, this should avoid any inadvertent movement by the aircraft in this case. Okay, and to finish off, what I'd like to do is an experiment to see if the Airbus automatically holds the 1000 PSI if we switch off the anti-skid and nose wheel steering. There we go. Auto brakes are no longer available once you go into this setting. So we get an ECAM warning. Let's just uh, review this. So here it says max braking pressure 1000 PSI, landing distance procedure apply, CAT2 only. So that basically means our landing distance is now longer. Makes sense because we have this limitation here. And there are some in-op systems, so we are no longer able to perform a CAT3 auto land. We have no longer anti-skid, no nose wheel steering, the normal braking is gone, and the auto braking is gone. According to this, we'll probably have to do it manually and uh, just apply very careful braking. But um, let's see. So let's remove the status. We are aware of what's going on. The parking brake is coming off. And yeah, let's see what happens. Let's accelerate and then start braking manually and see what happens to the brake pressure. Okay, we're doing 100 knots, idle and braking. So I'm now braking full and as we can see, it stops at 1000 PSI. So it seems the system is actually simulated. Even though the brake pedals are all the way down, it does not go above 1000 PSI. And as you can see, it takes a very long time for the aircraft to stop. So this is a lot slower than if you would normally apply full brakes. Which is why you have to perform a landing procedure, like a calculation in your system, where you would enter this failure and it would be taken into account and therefore you would make sure wherever it is you're going, the runway is long enough. So that's good. So they already included the new system. Well, new, it's actually not that new. I've been on the bus for quite some time. But uh, yeah, that's very good. And that is already the end of that. So, nice short video about the braking systems on the A320. Just to sum up, we have normal braking, alternate braking with anti-skid, alternate braking without anti-skid, and of course the parking brake 
Usually it's all run by the green hydraulic pressure system. If that's not available, the yellow takes over, everything stays normal. If both fail, you have the alternate braking without anti-skid, which means you have this accumulator that gives you up to seven brake applications, but you lose your anti-skid system and the nose wheel steering. Parking brake is run by the uh, yellow hydraulic system and if it's run by the accumulator, which can be done as well, it can last for up to 12 hours. And that was a quick summary of what we've just discussed. Thank you so much for watching to everyone. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you found it useful. And yeah, I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Until then, all the best. Bye bye.